And we're live. All right, so I'm not totally prepared. <laughs> I'm not totally prepared. The reason being that um, that I woke up a little bit later than I wanted to. 10 a.m. here. I usually wake up at 5:30, but I actually ended up sleeping until 9. Not a lot of time to get ready, so I also recorded another build video. So. Excellent, excellent shot there. I still got to set up the chat and the viewer count. Okay, viewer count is important. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna view it on my phone. Turn down the volume all the way because I don't want to hear my own voice. All right, we got the live chat going on here. Let's see, what else do we have going on here? I can't believe I have to work today. I don't want to work today. I do not want to work today, but I have to. So, boom. That's the deal. Got to work in order to make money. And the stream appears to be doing okay. I uh, I was watching some of the old streams and they appear to be very choppy. So I'm not really sure if it's if I'm doing a good job broadcasting them. I might want to like close down my my live dashboard from my uh, from my computer, or I can perhaps <clears throat> just pause it there. Pause it on my computer, and that way it doesn't uh, it doesn't mess up the streaming quality here. I also missed around with the bitrate and things, so hopefully that works out okay. Right now, just going to Streamlabs and uh, setting up that uh, the viewer count and everything. But it looks like it's going okay. It looks like that stream is going all right. I'm using data to stream, or sorry, to to view it on my phone, not not stream. Man, if I was streaming using data, that would suck. That would absolutely suck. All right, so we definitely have the. Of course, we always have the chat there, but what I'm going to do is, boom, launch the viewer count, and then copy the URL there, and then paste it in here. I don't know why I constantly have to do this. Okay, done that. Should refresh here. Boom. It's not refreshed yet. Okay, now it's refreshing. Boom. And we're at one. Good. Very cool. That sounds about accurate. And I'm also going to go to the alert box here. <coughs> boom, boom, boom. This live dashboard is not doing well. And I know I'm in the PvP lobby right now, but don't worry. Gonna, okay, use URL below in, in OBS Classic, OBS Studio, Xplit Browser Source Game Show, or just launch it and use Window Capture. Okay, yeah, you could do that. And uh, just just copy copy the widget URL for the alert box. All right, because if there's a new subscriber, then it's gonna play this really cute animation with whatever you know. Um, boom. So I've got that, and then if I do the if I do test subscriber, let's see if it works here. Alert sent, please. Let's see. Boom! Did it work? I don't think it worked. Let me do test subscriber again. Alert sent. Here we go. Excellent! It's working. Okay, so we've got that going, and I think everything is all... No, no, everything is not all set up. It's almost set up. I just got to launch the script, and then I can launch the YouTube chat here. Boom. All right, here we go. I got this really cool script. Boom, alt, and there you go. So there we go. Now this is always on top. 
I've also got to switch out my gear. Holy frick. All right, it's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. We're going to be all right. And uh, maybe not. Maybe we're not going to be okay because I just fell down in the PvP lobby. I know we're in the PvP lobby right now, but the reason for that is that... <coughs> oh, my goodness. The reason for that is that uh, we are just going to reset some of this stuff. What is this? Art of Glorious. What is this? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, hold on. This is... No, show me. Show me what it looks like. There we go. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Stocky Wolf, yo, how's it going? I think I know who this is. <laughs> no, this, um, this is not going to work. No, this, this armor sucks. Maybe you could use, maybe without the helmet and, and shoulders, maybe that looks... Soup, yeah, I figured it was soup. How's it going? Hope you're doing great. Okay, so we've got to uh, basically buy one of these miscapacitor things to reset. Uh, and we're going to buy these shards of glory. Yep, I hope you're doing great, soup. I don't know if I could call you by your real name. I don't know if you're comfortable with that. All right, shards of glory. Boom. Mm -hmm. Just got to buy 250 of these things. Okay. And one gold. No problem. And no problem. One gold is no problem. Okay. Pick it up at the trading post. And then we can reset. Basically, I had this build, okay? And, um, and it was soldier's gear. And basically being this super tank, all right? Super tank build. And... The problem was I forgot to actually reset one of my trinkets. Okay, one of my these trinkets are pretty important. All right, this, and um, trinket right here. These can be reset. So right, basically, I need the power, toughness, and vitality. But this is commander stats, which is power, precision, toughness, and concentration. Um, different stats, so it doesn't really go that well with the with the uh, tank build. So what I what I have to do is I have to use one of these mis capacitor things, and it just resets it. Doing good, bro. Just working. Glad I can watch this without having to be at your house. Always pwned at Guild Wars. Thank you. Yeah, it was, it's, it's been fun. I love Guild Wars. Always love Guild Wars. Um, and yeah, it was so fun, dude. Where you would come over and uh, and we we would play stuff together. Sometimes you just watch me. I still don't understand why you enjoyed watching me, but uh, but now I guess some more people enjoy watching me. So there you go. I mean. But yeah, it was, always, it was always really fun. I wish we could do that again. Ah, uh, how the times have gone by. Um, we got this Miss Talisman here. Oh, we can't actually... We're not going to be able to actually use that, can we? Um, because we can only reset one of each. It's like a live live stream. Yeah. Yeah, wait. A live live stream. Yeah, that's, that's all of them. <laughs> you, you pretty much nailed down all of them right there. Okay, so basically, I okay, so I use this mist capacitor here. Boom. Click that. It resets these. All right. So then, what I've got to do is I've got to go back to my bank. And this mist talisman here is something where I can just select the stats, basically, and I go over here and go to soldiers. That's power, toughness, vitality, and then, and then I can just put it back where the other ones are. Hold on. Which is I can just actually equip it. That's that's where the other ones are. They're on me. Okay, and then for the actual amulet, that's the necklace here. I could put that um, wherever my Harrier stuff is. I think it, I think this is Harrier stuff. Yeah, power, healing, power, and concentration. So that's another one of my builds that I have, and I could just use that there. And boom. So now we're gonna use the we're gonna switch to the damage gear, right? We're gonna use super damage gear because we're going into world v world. We're gonna own some people. Completely destroy them, completely obliterate them, and because uh, you know that's what we do—we're warriors, right? Super warrior. And let me go get my uh, my damage armor as well. We got the dragon mask. Is that is that the stuff we're using right now? No, we're using the the stuff of the eagle. Yeah, because this is the this is the this has runes of the scholar, so it's just okay. So we're doing this is the world v world gear. Boom. 
And I do have this legendary breastplate here, so let me just uh, equip this rune. Use. Boom. Get the rune back. Rune of the Doliac. All right. Here we go. Now just weapons. Almost ready. Almost ready to begin the fun. <laughs> we got daggers. This is Silence of a Thousand Years, by the way, that, uh, that dagger. I just reskinned it. And we got another dagger here, and of course the hammer. All right. So let's go into World B World now. Super excited. Maguma. Uh, actually, let's go to Yak's Bend, Alpine Borderlands. We're going to do this. We're going to own own some people. Just take some names. All right. I need to get some more water. I'll be right back. I'm going to get some more water. Okay, excellent. So, uh, more water, excellent. Super happy about this water. And we've got this build. All right, so I've got my uh, my super damagey build uh, for World v. World. Let's see what we could do. Let's wreak some havoc, shall we? Um, we can go to Hero's Lodge. We could go to Blue Barrel Refuge. I'm gonna go to Hero's Lodge instead. All right. I'm, I'm super excited to be getting back into World v. World because I haven't been able to do it all weekend. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to get this uh, Auric weapon. We get the Auric Basin uh, reward track. Once we complete that, we can do the Tangled Depths and everything. And also the, the wood, right? We got to complete wood division. We still haven't done that. We got to get these precious World v. World skirmish claim tickets that you get from opening these chests. Basically, you get, you get the wood, you get the bronze, silver, gold, platinum, mithril, and finally diamond. And, uh, you know, you can only do this stuff every, once a week, right? After that, you stop getting um, uh, World v. World Skirmish Claim tickets. So it's very, very important that you do as much as you can in one week and make proper use of your time, you know what I mean? But, but I haven't been able to do it all weekend, so I'm going to be on that grind and a little bit extra in the World v. World and chill. Okay, here we go. Uh, we are at, it's on a timer for about 20 more seconds, that's fine. Um, and we got a teammate over here. What's this teammate doing? Probably the same thing as me. Oh, looks like we got a couple of them. We got this guy. He's a weaver. Hollow Smith. Refreshing. refreshing. I don't know why my guy said refreshing. That wasn't actually uh, refreshing at all. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. All right. Boom. This is not going to be too hard because this is not... There are no actual players here. I mean, there are no actual enemies here. Uh, just... Okay, there's... Hold on a second. Boom. Let's get this guy. Let's kill him. Let's kill him. Why isn't he doing anything? <laughs> what is he doing? Okay, hold on. Crap. Break enchantments. Boom. Die. He can get away. He knows how to get away. Boom. I can do the leap skill. He's just getting away. He's just... He's just, he's just He's a coward. He's a coward. Stop running away, you stupid fricker. Let's go ahead and salvage this stuff. Basically, another thing that I do in this uh, in this stream is I like to I like to save all the loot boxes that I get while I'm playing because you get a lot of loot boxes from this, and I like to open them all at the end of the stream. Um, that way, it gives people incentive to stay till the end. Let's see what we got here. Go into this. Um, this sentry is red, but we already got some allies over here. Could go over to Blue Veil Refuge and see if there are any players over there. They, the other guy was such a coward, I couldn't catch up to him. I, I don't have enough speed. I've got this swiftness right here, all right, but swiftness is not quite enough. Um, really, what you need is Featherfoot Grace right here, which is super speed, and that um, that's that would allow me to catch up to him probably. And I also would probably need Bull's Charge. Right? Bulls Charge is an insane, insanely uh, strong uh, gap closer. What is, what's going on over here? This guy's on the wall. Look at this. They're trying to capture this thing. Did they breach the walls or something? Okay, hold on a second. Oh, this needs to happen right now. Why am I stealth? It's a, oh, no. oh, I'm in a bad neighborhood. Holy frick. No, I, I actually don't want to be here. I thought I did. I was wrong. Definitely do not want to be here. 
crap, son. And that's, that's, I can't even take that. That was, okay, so basically, uh, Red was there. Red was there first. That's why people were inside the thing, even though I only saw one of my allies. Red got there first, and they were there with the Zerg. They were there with an insanely huge group of people. And, uh, they got it before. Okay. Man, I just, I got here just in time. Look at this, I don't even get to kill anybody. That's fine. I'm, I'm cool with it. Look. We're getting participation, right? That's the important thing. We're getting participation, and we captured this place, right? So we're fine. We're doing fine. Okay. But we are going to go over here to this uh, this ruin here. We're going to go to the ruin. The ruins will give us extra participation, right? More participation means eventually we're going to get some pips. Definitely I said pips with a P. Not a T. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, let's all just clean our minds. Steady your mind. Okay. And as you can see, something that I like to do in World v. Worlds is I like to actually keep my supply as full as possible, even if I am not... Uh, even if... Why are they doing this? Is that a warrior? Is that a warrior with a great sword? I'm trying to go. Would you do? slow stop? <laughs> Jeez. I can't even see this guy. This is is this a no, this is a dragon hunter. Okay, so he's not a warrior. Just a guardian. Uh I don't know why are we doing this. Why are we doing I I mean are we fighting? We're taking down this flame ram, I could see, but uh I'm not really sure why. Boom. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really know why they... Oh, that is a warrior! That's a spellbreaker, like me! But he's using a spell... He's using a, uh, he's using a greatsword. I don't use a greatsword, I don't use the meta build. Uh, you know, some people use a meta build, and that's because they're dorks. But, uh, I use dual daggers. Dual daggers are super fun to play with. Meta build is currently greatsword and hammer. I do use hammer, but, uh, the greatsword I'm just not a big fan of for spellbreaker. Maybe if you're a berserker or core warrior, but... Uh, you know, Power Berserker, of course. Or Power Warrior. This is that same Daredevil. Hold on a second. This is that Daredevil that we saw from before, but he's still running away like a coward. Boom. No, die. Boom. He's so good at running away. That's the only thing he's good at. <laughs> That's the only thing he's good at is just running away. We also haven't actually eaten any of the food that helps us, so let's go ahead and eat that and the utility items as well. Yeah, look at that. He's running away. He's going to run to these ruins, which is probably the worst place for him to run. If he... Basically, if he if he had any sense in his brain, he'd just run inside his tower because... Because the tower is something that his team already owns, right? Yak's Bend? I think Yak's Bend is red. Oh, no, no, no. Right, Yak's Bend is actually green, so... So actually, no. Yeah, he was he was probably right to run into these ruins. That's fine. Okay. I'm still looking forward to the time we get to use the uh, the Rampage skill, right? Rampage. Take the form of a massive juggernaut. Right? You get you get basically double health. Okay? You get basically like 40,000 health instead of 20,000. And uh, you get to use all sorts of fun knockdown skills. You get to throw rocks. To throw rocks, you get to like charge at your enemies, you get to like stomp on your enemies. I love that skill. And the thing is, I used to use Runes of Holbrick, and Runes of Holbrick do this thing where they decrease um, condition duration on you. And that was really cool, but I realized that I wasn't getting enough critical hits. Okay, it was it was just not nearly enough, and I also my critical hits were not as useful as they could be with the ferocity, right? Because runes of Holbrook give power, they give might duration, all that stuff. But oh, oh, here we go. Here's our chance. This is that freaking um daredevil. Holy crap! Boom. Break enchantments. Break enchantments. Your enchantments are broken. I'm gonna die. I freaking died. He was strong in the end. He was really strong. Then why did he fight? That's, that's, that's amazing to me, because he was super strong, right? He was super good. Also, I wasn't even prepared. Let me just make excuses right now. I wasn't prepared. I had lag. 
I'm just kidding. No, he beat me. Um, he beat me. I don't know why he uh, he avoided me for so long. I was trying to chase after him. He could have easily just turned around, bah, just got me. But he didn't. So, boom, you know. Uh, however, I didn't... Now, it said it said my Assassin's Horse of the Dragon of the Eagle took damage, but none of my armor is damaged, which tells me that perhaps we're going to be outnumbered. Uh, however, I'm still at Tier 2 participation, so it wouldn't even freaking matter. As long as I'm not at Tier 3, I'm not going to be gaining pips anyway. Outnumbered bonus only really matters for pips. Kill a random bird. Boom. Take out my frustration on this bird. Stop it, bird. Stop being alive. Okay. We got a rabbit. Kill a rabbit. Apparently, we captured Bluebriar. All right. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm happy for our team. Uh, I wish I could have been a part of it. But they just left me behind. So, okay. What One thing I was mentioning before is I like to keep my supply all stocked up. And my max supply is 11. But when you have this guild objective aura... You get a maximum of you get like a like a an increase in your cap. Basically, it increases your cap by five. Who's this guy? Two people. Oh geez. Three. No. No. Leave. I can't take down. I can't. I can't do three on one. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. Maybe that's what that daredevil was doing. No, they're gonna they're gonna chase after me. Boom. They're chasing after me. Is he? Now, if he's the only one that chases after me, then perhaps I can actually take him. But... Yeah, he did try to knock me down. I saw that. I got the automatic balance stance. Interrupt. I couldn't. He's using the binding of Epos. Break enchantments. Boom, you're dead. Come on, die. Die. I'm getting all this adrenaline and everything, but I got nowhere to use it. Alright, hammer. Here we... I was going to do hammer time. Gosh, I suck at this game. I don't know, man. I got to get... I, I'm shaking off the rust, basically, is what I'm doing. Because I haven't done World v. World in, in the, the entire weekend. I basically, on Friday, I did it a little bit Friday morning. Okay, I streamed Friday morning. I wasn't able to stream on Saturday because I had to work. Because Lunar New Year is this week. Uh, I couldn't stream on Sunday because I had a whole bunch of other stuff to do. I had to go to Seoul and everything. I stayed overnight in Seoul, and so I didn't stream yesterday, which was Monday. Um, and I didn't actually get home yesterday until, like, when did I get... When did I even get home? Like, 8 or something? <laughs> I didn't get home until, until, like, 8 at night. And, uh, yeah, I was, I was beat. I was at... No, don't take it like that. Um, I, w I was, I was very tired, okay, just, let me just clean that up right there. I was very tired, I was very worn out, and, uh, and yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't play any World v. World last night or anything, so I'm, I'm kind of rusty already. I haven't played for a couple days, plus probably what would help is if I ran Endure Pain, right, because we got the stances right here, and I have been running Break Enchantments, but, uh, perhaps I need that Endure Pain for the five seconds of invulnerability. <laughs> I think, I just think warriors are just the absolute kings of being tanks. I mean, you know. Soup, I don't know if you're still, I don't know if you're still in the stream, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I appreciated your, your commentary. That was, that was really cool. It gives me kind of, uh, you know, something to talk about as well. I think warriors are, are the kings of being tanks. Like right? kings and queens. Right? Super tough, super resilient. I mean, I'm not paint. I'm not playing a tank built. This is. This doesn't even look like a dagger. Holy frick! This looks like just a sword. <laughs> this does not look like these dagger skins. I'm telling you, these dagger skins that they're making are so huge. Like if I go to wardrobe, boom, and if I go to daggers, these now this sort of that looks like a dagger. Okay, but super tough. Yes, they are super tough. You got that one, Soul Shard. That looks like a dagger, right? Can I... Oh, hold on. I didn't actually... Boom. That looks like a sort of a dagger. It's pretty It's pretty big, though. That looks like a dagger. But if you look at these new ones, the Gold Fractal Dagger, that does not look like a dagger. That looks like a freaking sword. 
or the um, Silence of a Thousand Years does look like a dagger, I've got to say. Silence of, the, Silence of a Thousand Years is definitely my favorite because it's, it's unique to the Spellbreaker. Another one that I really like is uh, Final Sting. That's a really cool dagger. That actually does look like a dagger. But some of these newer ones, you know, they don't even look like daggers. Okay, let's Scardian. Look at this. This guy's name is Scardian, and he's a guardian. That's pretty funny. All right, is this still on a timer? It's not on a timer. Uh, probably our team is going to capture it pretty soon because... I didn't, um, I didn't, I mean, I, I assume, I'm, I actually don't really have a reason for assuming, but, but I was right, look at this, I was right, can I perhaps make it there, let me make it there, come on, stop, don't capture it without me, oh, okay, yes, 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 I made it, I made it, we're good, I got 200, uh, experience, and I am still at tier two participation, but I'm almost, I am almost at tier three. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to the ruin again. We're gonna go to the ruin. We are almost at tier three participation. Once we do that, we can actually go to a different borderlands because I really want to get the um, the pips. Oh yeah, somebody says we're outnumbered at the Maguma borderlands. That was three minutes ago, and I didn't even see it. It's fine. We're fine. Don't even worry about it. All right, here we go. Oh, I don't know why I stopped there. Okay. Yeah, they say hurry quick, Maguba Borderlands for pips. Yeah, I definitely want those pips. I'll tell you that much. Got to get those extra pips. Trying to get the legendary armor. I mean, I've already got one piece, and I'm super happy about that. Right? That's why it's purple. That's why the name is purple. And, um, you know, you could change the stat. Hold on a second. Look at that. I, I'm still on Power Toughness Vitality. Look at that. I didn't even... Do, I can't believe I did do... Look at this. Hold on. E unequip. Select stats. Where... Where is it? Here we go. Select stats. Yeah, I got my shirt off. <laughs> uh, assassins. Boom. Power Precision Ferocity with main stat precision. Excellent. Now my crit chance is 78%. Got that awesome crit chance. All right, capturing this, and then boom, just in time, got tier three participation and going to get those extra pips. It's only five, but it's something. All right, let's see. Boom, we got that. We're, we're actually now outnumbered. We got the outnumbered bonus, which means next tick, we're gonna get five extra pips just because we are outnumbered. So there you go, boom. All right, we also own this sentry. We're just gonna like kind of just fly around, see what we can do by capturing ruins. Um, you know, just just see what we could do here. And there you go. I mean, man, I'm so happy. I have uh, I do have to work today. Today's Tuesday. I do have to work today, but after today, because of Lunar New Year, I don't have to work for another whole week. So I have, so I don't have to work till next Tuesday. So I've got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, six whole days off. So are you jealous? Cause, oh, oh I love stretching. Oh. I'm also wondering where Sejin, I think Sejin usually shows up around 10.30 or so can't remember when she usually shows up, but but I think it's around 10.30 or something like that. The darkest timeline. Dang, yes I am. Yeah, I don't... <laughs> yeah, I... In Korea, living in Korea has its perks, you know? We get the uh, whole week off for, for Lunar New Year. Thanksgiving in Korea is in September, usually, and we get, like, the whole week off for that. It's called Chuseok. Um, yeah, that is a, that's a fun holiday, and what are some other holidays? We usually get, uh, like, a few days off for Christmas. Um, we don't have a bunch of, like, random holidays, like, like, scattered throughout the year, like, like we do in America, so it's not, like, a random day off every now and then. It's, like, um, it's, like, more spread out, but then when you get some time off, it's, like, you get a few days off or a whole week off. 
actually Korean, and I have to work six days. What gives? <laughs> oh, man. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, I guess some jobs are not... Some jobs don't give you the time off. But definitely my, my hog one gives me the time off. Um, yeah, I um, I work for Chongdam. I don't know if you know about Chongdam or hog one. And technically, they're only giving Thursday and Friday off, but I only work for them on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I just skip that Thursday and then work the next Tuesday. I mean, so, you know, my coworkers are only getting like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They get four days off, but I don't work. I don't work um, Wednesday. So I get that extra day off, and then I don't work Mondays either. So I get that day off as well. Chuseok is fun though. Chuseok, I got uh, I got a whole week then. But the cool thing is, see, I work part time at Tongdam. So when they give me, oh, that was close. I almost just died. When they give me time off, okay, um, for those holidays, I still like I only get paid for the days that I actually work. So normally holidays would not be good because that would mean that I don't get paid for those days. But instead, what they do is they reschedule the classes, so I usually work on the weekends, and then I just get a long extended period of time off. So that's why I had to work, um, what, three days ago, which was Saturday. I had to work on Saturday because um, because then I don't have to work this Thursday. So it's like I still work the same amount of days. It's just rescheduled. So I'm okay with that. But next term, I'm supposed to get more days, actually. I'm excited. Um... It's almost the end of the term here, and next term I'm going to get to hopefully four days a week. So that will be good. It will kind of double my paycheck. And um, and there you go. I mean, and Tung Dam pays pretty well. And it's a nice hog one to work for, honestly. it's uh, It's got really good quality of life. The, the co-workers there are, are really nice, and they're all foreigners. So they all speak English. The and I'm gonna die right here. This is that's the end of me right there. Boom. Oh, interrupted into Wastrel's ruin. What? Two hits. Two hits. I don't know if you guys saw that. Holy frick, that was awesome. That was insane. He was just running around disrupting. Look at this. This skill is what I did. Disrupting stab. He was just running around. I just went, boop. Just poked him. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, that's actually much more convenient. When I worked part-time, they had me on schedule every other day. That sucks. Yeah, that would suck. Um, I actually, I mean, the thing is, I work in the afternoon, so it's um, it's not too bad. And I don't know, Soup, if you're still in here, you can comment um, uh, on this, but... Basically, I usually work in the afternoon. I have to work starting at, I have to leave my house at like, what, 1.30 or so? Yeah, I leave my house at about 1.30 and I work, I teach from four to seven. All right, so um, on Saturday, they didn't, of course they didn't want me to teach Saturday night. They actually wanted me to come in and die to this element, or to this uh, thief right here is what they wanted me to do. And, <laughs> I'm gonna die. Um, they wanted me to come in in the morning, and so instead, I had to work. This guy's so squishy. What is the deal with this guy? They wanted me to work. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. Um, from uh, ten to one, so I had to wake up early, right? I had to leave my house. I wanted to get there at like nine a.m., so I had to leave my house at like seven thirty. Because it takes me quite a long time to get there. Because I live in Songtan and Chengdam is in Yangtong, which is near Suwon. So it takes me quite a long time. But um, but because of that, I actually had to wake up early and uh, and I had to leave early. And I don't really like that. Like it's not it's not something I like. But I'm really thankful to have the job, and I actually enjoy the job. So it wasn't too bad. Um, you know, I don't, I don't complain about that kind of thing because it's money, right? You got to get that, you got to be on that money, on that grind, getting paper. You know what I mean? Just, uh, you know, so. 
can't really complain about that. I'm I'm just really thankful to have the job, uh, especially. I mean, I'm really thankful that Chongdam is giving me extra days, um, because I've been working at Chongdam only part time since September, basically since the beginning of September, or maybe it was the middle middle of September, and um, and I've needed some extra days. And it's been hard to get another job because it's been like nearing the end of the school year and most people are like on contract until the end of the school year. So um, it's great healthy attitude. Thank you. Try to keep that healthy attitude. It's it's difficult sometimes, you know, when those kids are being super loud. But <laughs> I just remind myself that, you know, I like this job. I'm thankful that I have this job and and I've got to make it work no matter what. You know, so just like in Guild Wars 2, right? I play a warrior in Guild Wars 2, and I'm a warrior in real life. So, I mean, warrior meaning I, I overcome these challenges, and I'm not afraid of the challenge. So, um, you know, when it comes to that attitude, yeah, I, I just, you got to make it work. And um, so, you know. But uh, I don't I don't remember actually what I was saying. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Before I started this stream, I actually, I, I wanted to do this thing where I revisited one of my old warrior builds, and I have a playlist of warrior builds. I'm also going to die very soon, quite soon, actually. Um, boom. Can I do full counter, please? I'm, it's a 2v1. I'm going to die. Like, there's no, there's no chance of me winning this fight, but, I mean, you just got to try as hard as you can, I guess. I recorded a video about the warrior build. A warrior build that I wanted to, to revisit called the Dolyak build and that was a really fun build uh, to make and it's a really fun build to play and I got a playlist I think it's down in the description I believe let me just check uh, no it's actually not down in the description it's on my channel I got to put that in the description somehow but um, it's like a real fun game altogether it really is honestly um, Guild Wars 2 um, and I main warrior. I play warrior in this in this game, so I got a lot of fun builds to play. Um, currently, I'm using a special build for the PvP that I play. It's, it's called World v. World. And it's basically where three different servers get matched up. They play against each other. And um, it's like open world PvP. And uh, it's not the full game mode, right? It's not the only game mode. But it is one of the game modes, and it's quite fun to play, honestly. Um... Uh, let me see. Okay, I did get a wood chest. Here we go. Is that my first wood chest? Yes, it was. It was my first wood chest. So, got a skirmish chest, memory battle, instant war track progress, and three skirmish claim tickets. So, I'm going to keep the skirmish claim or the uh, skirmish chests, and I guess I could deposit the memories of battle. Okay. But I've got this. Um, I've got a build also that I use that's called the Dolyak build, and I get this super tanky gear. And super, just uh, super defensive traits and all that, and super defensive skills, and and all that stuff. And basically, you just you can't die. Like you could just face tank all this stuff. You got you could uh, block, and you're just constantly regenerating tons of health and everything. And you got loads of toughness, so all of the chunks of damage are just mitigated. Um, it's just so, so fun to play, and I've got that build. You can check out the original build in the playlist. I have a playlist of warrior builds on my channel, um, but I'm also pretty soon going to upload the revisited one where I've got it. I've got a, basically a perfected version of it, because the first time I uploaded the video of it, I just wanted to upload a build video, even though it was just an idea at that point. Um, but now it's like perfected build and I know exactly how to play it and everything and I've, I've used it to like solo some really difficult content just because you just can't die you just outlast everything as long as whatever you're fighting is not regenerating all the time you can't really use it in PvP uh, because everybody else just does so much damage that like you could survive a long time but you, you can't kill anything because they're able to heal much faster than you're able to kill them uh, which is not the case in PvE, because in PvE, uh, stuff doesn't heal nearly as fast, so you're generally able to survive easier, and uh, and you're able to actually outlast them because of that. But 
Nevertheless, it is a really fun build to play. Tons of blocks. You end up regenerating like 1,500 health a second. Do you only play these old world fantasy games or do you also explore other things? Well, um, currently I've just made, basically been on Guild Wars 2. However, um, I did recently start up a series of a really fun game called Caves of Cud. And uh, I have a playlist on, of that on my channel as well. Um, I've got the first two episodes up. And that's set in the very, very far future. And it's like, um, it's a roguelike RPG, but I turned off permadeath, so. Um, and that's a, that's a really fun game to play. It's a futuristic game. Um, but basically, like, where the entire world is like this really apocalypse. It's like thousands of years after an apocalypse. Like super far in the future and so barely anything is recognizable but it's super fun to to play and and it's kind of just a really really cool story and you find out the history of the sultans that were there like just bits and pieces of history and you kind of get to piece together what happened and and all the while facing super powerful enemies and everything and you know you play as a mutated mutated human and uh, that's a really fun game to play. I have that on my channel. I also like exploring other games, but mainly nowadays I play Guild Wars 2. So, there's that. Um, let me see. We are at still, oh no, we're at tier four participation. Okay, very cool. So next tick, we're actually going to get uh, the Thorned Caches. Boom. And then the Thorn Caches are going to be a loot box that I can actually uh, save until the uh -huh. end. I always save the loot boxes till the end. So we're going to do that. Um, there have been some other games that I've wanted to kind of play on my channel, but I don't really know if people would want to see it. Um, the problem is that I don't have really enough people to ask because generally my, like my core viewer base is is kind of small. So... So basically, if I had more people that I could ask, then I could say, "Hey, what do you guys want to see?" Um, and you know, and they could tell me. I'm gonna switch chat because the team chat is getting really weird. <laughs> but uh, but I got some really fun games that I love to play. Being post-apocalyptic, they start to rebuild the world, technological advances, or is it still desolate? It's hard to really say um, because you've got. Uh, basically, you've got like this small faction of people called the, I think it's called the Putus Templar, which are basically like human purists, and they don't believe in in uh, mutations because a lot of the humans are mutated, and they're like these elitist humans that are not mutated, and they do have technology, and they've got like cybernetic implants and stuff that they get, so if you play as a true kin, meaning a non-mutated human, then you can choose, instead of choosing mutations, you choose one cybernetic implant that you can get for your character. And and that's really cool because you could choose like night vision or you can choose like some some like uh, cybernetic thing in your feet that helps you run faster or something like that. And um, that's really cool. They have technology. The mutated humans and stuff don't generally have technology because their mutations take care of a lot of things. Like um, instead of technological night vision, the mutated humans will sometimes have just a mutation of their eyes where they can see in the dark. Um, sometimes they have mutation where they grew wings. Um, sometimes they've got like multiple arms, multiple legs, um, or double muscles, right? Like double the muscles in their arms or something like that, so they're super powerful. Sometimes they got claws so they could dig through stuff. Um, generally, though, the world is pretty desolate in that game. It's, it's so desolate, in fact, that the currency is water. It's fresh water. Like, fresh water is so hard to come by. Um, cool, like, comic book mutants, special powers and stuff? Yes, um, exactly. Um, and when you create your character, if you create a, a mutated human, you get to actually choose the mutations that you have. And it's really, it's really, some of them are pretty cool. You can have, like, flaming hands or frost hands, something like that. You can, like, shoot fire from your hand. Sometimes they have a thing where you can just light a small fire with your mind. Or you can talk to other people telepathically. Really fun game. The The graphics are very simple. 
right? And you have to use your imagination for some of it, but the writing in it is absolutely fantastic, and it's being developed pretty much just by one guy, and it's it's very fantastic. He's he's really good. At, he's really good at programming, and uh, and just the amount of detail that goes into that game is just so so insane. Just like you're like, I cannot believe that this is even possible. There's one one time somebody was like. Like you can you can make a clone of yourself or something like that, or or maybe it's like some some guy just like took control of a different creature and then went up to him and just like dismembered his arm and just started beating himself over the head with his own arm. Like the amount of detail that you could do there that that you could see in that game is just absolutely mind boggling. But it's a fun game. I got the, the first two episodes. My character's name is Mehun. I just randomly generated the name. And, uh, yeah, that was fun. That's fun playthrough. I'm really enjoying that one. Um, I got I got a few other games that I would like to try. One of them being a game called Road Redemption. Um, I've got maybe a few games. Let me see. Well, I'm a child of the 80s, so I had no choice but to have an imagination to keep from going insane from boredom. That's absolutely true. I am... I was born in 1995, okay, so I didn't have, you know, completely the same the same thing, but... Um, but I did have to use my imagination for a lot of things, because the graphics just weren't there yet. Uh, you know, nowadays, this, this is a game Guild Wars 2, you know, the graphics are pretty advanced, right? So you can... Um, you could just go and you could just see basically everything that you would imagine. But uh, but in, in the old games, you couldn't really do that. I remember playing um, the Game Boy version of Mortal Kombat. It was like nothing. It's just like most of, <laughs> most of that stuff is left to the imagination there. On an original Game Boy. Not, not even Game Boy Color. Just the original. Ow, I shall break you. That was kind of crazy. Um... But yeah, I do have a, a few other games that I would like to try on my channel. I just gotta like, I gotta have some way of finding out if it would, if it would actually, people would want to watch it. Very advanced, feeling jealous again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was, it was fun at the time. It's, it's kind of hard to go back to that though. Once you, once you've actually experienced the newer stuff. But, I mean, um, I've also got No Man's Sky. I mean, I suppose uh, people could. Maybe potentially enjoy seeing No Man's Sky. I've also got a really cool map game called Europa Universalis 4, which I've played in the past. Um, usually my series didn't advance too far because I just kind of got I got bored of the campaign, basically. I didn't want to continue it. Either that or in one of my videos, I would just like... Everything would completely go to crap and, and I couldn't... I didn't have any way of recovering from it, so I just ended the series right there. But... <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've got a, I've got a bunch of fun games on my channel or on my in, in Steam. I have them on Steam that I would love to play for this channel, honestly. Um, but like I said, you know, it's just I, I've got to figure out if the audience would actually be there. It's very fun. Street Fighter 2, Mortal Kombat, great memories. Yeah, absolutely. I love Mortal Kombat. Um, I played I played most of the Mortal Kombat games. I played. Um, I played the first one. I think I played the first one back in an arcade. Because sometimes basically movie theaters would have these old arcade games. And, and so I actually played Mortal, the first Mortal Kombat uh, in an ar arcade. Or I think somebody I knew had an NES. And, and I may have played it on there. Um, or perhaps... Was it on NES or was it Super Nintendo? It could have been Super Nintendo, SNES, um, but and then I played. Let me see. Then there was Mortal Kombat three. I think Mortal Kombat four was the first three D one. Is that right? I think that, but I I don't I didn't play Mortal Kombat four. Um, there was Mortal Kombat. Um, gosh, there was a lot of them. There was <laughs> there was um, Deadly Alliance. I think was number five, and I did play that one. I actually I remember renting that game from Blockbuster. Holy frick. Um, yeah, I rented that game from Blockbuster. Played it on my PS2. <laughs> and uh, that was a fun game. Deadly Alliance. Then there was Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. 
And that was kind of a different style of Mortal Kombat game. But, uh, but it was a good game. Arcades, bringing it back. Put quarters in the, yeah, on the glass to hold the next spot. Yep. Exactly. You gotta, <laughs> gotta like, wait for your turn. <laughs> People are playing. Um, yeah, that was fun. Um, there was also Mortal Kombat Deception. That had a really, really fun um, I can't remember what it was called. Conquest mode, maybe? And it was like this adventure mode. Um, and you you went through time. Like you were, you were, it was following the story of this guy. Shujinko, I believe was the name. And, um, and you followed like his life trying to stop something from going on or whatever. <laughs> And you get to travel to all the different realms and everything. And it was so simple. Like, it was clear that definitely their time was not mainly devoted to this. Like, but it was so fun. Like, that that thing was, that, that mode was just probably my most fun time playing Mortal Kombat Deception. Uh, I remember when Mortal Kombat Armageddon came out. That was awesome. Mortal Kombat Armageddon was a fun game. Last one that they made for the PS2, I believe. And uh, then they started moving on because they said basically it was just too much for the uh, the current generation of consoles to handle. They were going to move on to the next one. That was awesome. Conquest mode. And Mortal Kombat Armageddon also had a conquest mode. Um, I can't remember how fun that was. I, I know that it was definitely not as fun as Deception, but I can't remember if it was actually good or if I, like, hated it. I can't remember. Because I just remember that the most fun to me uh, playing Mortal Kombat Armageddon was just was just playing through as all those different characters and matching them all up. And uh, I also had this really cool idea where basically, like, Armageddon mode, where in my mind, it was just like you put every character on the field, and it was just like a free for all, and they were all just battling out, battling it out to see which one was the last one standing, and that would have been a really cool mode. But they never added anything like that. I thought that would have been cool. If you don't remember, then it probably wasn't fun. Left no impression. Yeah, it it, it was kind of forgettable. I didn't really spend too much time on it. So, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. But yeah, Mortal Kombat games, man. I, I love those games. Um, man, I there were there were a lot of games that I just like. I just I had so much history with, and then like the new one came out, and I just had to get it. Um, Guild Wars Two is one of them actually, because I played the original Guild Wars, and that was really fun. Played Warrior on that as well, and. Um, yeah, so Guild Wars 2 was one of those things. I don't know if you ever played Katamari Damashi, but that was a Japanese game, and it was for PS2, and they came out with some other games, uh, like one for the PSP. That was a very, very fun game. You basically have this, this ball, and you try to like roll up everything and get bigger and bigger. Um, very fun game. I remember the first time I got it, I like rented it from Blockbuster. My family loves to rent movies from Blockbuster, so they always let me rent a game as well. Um, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I rented it from Blockbuster. It was, like, so fun that I had to get it. So as soon as I could, I went to GameStop and I got it. And then I got, whenever I got a PSP, I got the, the next Katamari game that came out. And there were some really fun Katamari games. Um... I just remember you get you get so huge. Like there was this one one level you get just so big and you just pick up earth. Like the Katamari just like picks up earth. Um and sometimes you you start so small like you're just picking up little like like a pencil, right? You pick up a pencil and it makes it so when you roll up it like the pencil like lifts you up because the ball is so tiny and then you get so big that you're picking up buildings and uh I don't know, fun game. Definitely part of my childhood. I still have some of the Katamari music on my Spotify. But uh, I think, when did that game come out? Maybe like 2005 or something like that? I don't know. But 
Yeah, that was fun. Let me see. We're really going down the nostalgia list. Arcades, Blockbuster. If you mentioned Tower Records, that's the trifecta. No, I don't have any experience with Tower Records, but um, I I never I never I don't know if you, I I don't know if you're talking about the um, like like setting records on arcade towers. I think that's what you're talking about, but I was never that good. I love to play them. But I wasn't good enough to set a record. Um, yeah, that those those were the days. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, somebody messaged me. Said uh, I was talking about my nicknames. <laughs> so I'm talking about my nicknames. Um. Yeah, also I found out how to say Spellbreaker in, in Korean recently. It's a cool word, actually. See, Tower Records was a music store like Sam Goody. Okay. Um, yeah, definitely I never... I didn't have experience with that either. Because I, I started getting music like... Kind of as CDs were like kind of near their end. Like, so... Like, I would listen to music on the radio, but it's, but when I started collecting music, that was when CDs were like were like on their way out sort of and I was like burning mp3s onto my own CDs so I could play them in the car that's when I started getting it so yeah I don't have any experience with records um, my parents had a lot of CDs and of course and my dad <clears throat> my dad had um, maybe a couple of records I don't know my my uncle has a lot of records because my uncle like hates technology like hates modern technology and so he just collects records and he has a record player and he doesn't like CDs or whatever and he's like he doesn't get internet or what I don't know he's weird he doesn't like he's sort of weird but he's also cool right because it's just kind of like that little glimpse of the past and he's, he's, he's a nice guy too so and he has a lot of records so yeah I mean kind of like a blast blast from the past that I never got to experience but um, yeah let me see I'm just, I'm just responding to this on my normal videos I don't respond to messages but on on uh, what's it called on live streams I have to sometimes more for the hangout experience sit around with your friends listen to music designated sessions sections and drink yeah, yeah I could probably see that um, I could probably see that um, you just go in right you um, you put on some there's records that you enjoy you talk about that you talk about girls probably I mean that's something that doesn't really change guys talk about girls right I remember I remember back in my day <laughs> I remember my my friends and I just used to like just sit around school. Man, she is so hot. <laughs> I never thought I when I was growing up, I never thought I'd be that kind of guy, but every guy's that kind of guy. Talk about girls, right? Some some you always there's always that, I always that girl that's like way out of your league, but you don't even care. It's like, man, trying to ask her out. Right, but you can't get the courage to. It's so hard because you know that she's way out of your league. You know that she's like super popular, and she's never gonna say yes or whatever. You never get the courage. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you don't. Basically, if you do, it turns into a good experience either way. Because if she rejects you, then you just learn how to handle the rejection. If she doesn't reject you, then you get a date with her, which is pretty cool. But, um, but. You know, but then you, I don't know, I never, I, I didn't really ask people out. I, I had kind of bad experiences. <laughs> I kind of, I asked out the wrong girls in high school. I, I asked out the, the people that like, like they probably should have been single. Because, um, oh, Sejin, hello Sejin, welcome, welcome to the stream. So glad you could join us today. Was wondering where you were. I mean, and, and don't get me wrong, because during, I don't, I don't want to just, like, diss my exes, because, like, um, you know, they were yeah, just some good experiences as well, but, um, but overall, like, they, they had some stuff, 
they had some things that they probably needed to work out before they <coughs> excuse me sorry <laughs> before they started getting into a relationship Sejin is back welcome Sejin <laughs> bless you thank you <laughs> some people say I sound like an elephant when I sneeze and uh, I think I agree with them pretty sure I sound like an elephant what is this guy he's just following me look at this Still on the timer for like 20 seconds. Let me finish responding to this message. Sejin, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good day. Um, let me see. I'm just, I, I've got to take, I got to, it's so hard for me to do. Elephant, you got the elephant and the bear, right? Sejin always says, says I'm a bear when I yawn, when I stretch out. Um, Um, let me see. Eventually, I gotta do this. People, ask, so, somebody's asking me the origin of my Korean name, but I made it. That's that's where it comes from. All right, so there we go. Boom, done. Now we can capture this thing, and it looks like our team is already capturing it, which is quite cool. Oh, I barely got it. Sweet, and I ranked up as well. I'm rank uh, 47. Awesome. So I get this stuff, uh, Chest of the Mist, which is another loot box I can save to the end. Boom. Excellent. Yeah, as, um, as a 90s kid, a lot of stuff I'm nostalgic about, honestly. Um, but it's kind of like, I guess it's a process of growing up. You kind of realize that the world is not really going to wait. Tell me, you Oppa. <laughs> yep. I guess part of growing up is you realize that the world is not going to really like the world the world's going to kind of like move on and um and those things that were so awesome to you are now just old to to the newer generation and and it's kind of hard to accept that cuz um you know I when I was growing up it was like the coolest thing was to have like a PS2 you know you, so you had a PS2 and uh you know any any time you could have any friend you wanted over because you could just play PS2 games. You got two controllers. Even better if you got that little extension that let that lets you do four controllers. That was awesome, right? And uh, and now it's like people don't even go to people's houses anymore to play game consoles. You just play online. Everything is online. And couch co-op games are fun, right? But they're not not too common anymore, whereas they used to be super common. And I love couch co-op. I, I just remember so many times, like, I would get, like, Lego Star Wars or, or something like that, and I would... This guy's gonna kill me. Um, I would get, like, Lego Star Wars or whatever, and I would get uh, Matthew. My, my friend Matthew. Um, Sejin knows about Matthew. <laughs> I'd get my friend to come over, and... Um, and we just play that together, and that was a fun time, man. That was, that was, that was fun. We just play... And we'd unlock all the stuff. But nowadays it's just, you know, it's inevitable. Like you said, back in my day, the world's become so different in such a short period of time. I feel like it's getting faster, too. I think everybody feels like it's getting faster, right? I'm going to die, definitely. This is like a 4v1. I feel like, I feel like everybody knows it's getting faster. Um, the world is just changing so fast. And, like, even though I, I still feel like almost like I'm in high school. I'm 22. I turn 23 next month. But I still feel like I'm in high school, and I have a nephew that just went into high school. Michelle, that's my friend. It's her nickname for my friend. Um, and um, and yet I have a nephew that just went into high school, and I'm I'm thinking like like he doesn't even use the same slang terms as I do, and I feel like if I try to use the same slang terms. Then he's just gonna say, "Oh, that's so embarrassing," you know, "you're so uncool" or whatever. Just like I used to think about adults that would try to use my slang terms, and I'm just like, "Like that really sucks," because like I really truly relate to to kids. I really do because I just I just grew up recently, so legally I'm still kind of like a kid, but. Um, um, 
Try being almost 40 and feeling like you're, like you're still in high school. Can't believe how fast. I know, right? I mean, I can't relate to that because I'm not almost 40, but I mean, just just thinking like I'm going to be 23. Actually, not next month. It's this month. That's how fast it's gone. <laughs> this month, I'm going to be 23. Actually, in like, uh, let's see, today's the 13th, 12 days. I'll be 23. And um, that means I will have actually been out of high school for longer than I was in high school for the first year. That's insane to me. And um, and it's just like, you just, you got to find a way to retain that aspect about yourself. Like, I don't mean being immature or things like that, but but like you have to find a way to retain that 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 feeling that you're still in high school and as far as I can tell the best thing to do to retain it happy birthday thank you um, the best thing that I can think of to retain it is basically you have to have the same attitude uh, that you were in high school about that you had in high school about like adapting to new things because that's when that's when we adapted to the music right that's when we 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 liked all the new music and then you get out of high school and you don't like the new music anymore and you stop listening to new music and everything should i say birthday i have a new york accent i see um <laughs> um but uh like basically if when when you stop adapting to things and you stop you stop being flexible with your mind and everything that's when you truly get older and that's when you you like stop being a kid um but you can retain that basically if you just you keep keep your mind open you know I still like to listen to new music barf day hopefully not I'm going to eat a lot of cake but hopefully not that much um you know, sometimes I go on Spotify and I just like, I look at the related songs and like, if I've never heard the song before, I'll just listen to it. So agree. You have to adapt. Yes. Because there are a lot of people that just automatically, they just, they, they've got a lot of things that they see that are changing because they grew up and they just close up and they just only want to listen to the same music and they only want to do the same things that made them happy in high school. And 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 drink and <laughs> drink alcohol as well um and because of that you know so many people end up feeling super old when they're 25 and yeah i mean i'm starting to feel old as well but but still i'm you know you just gotta keep doing your best and 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 you gotta keep finding new things that are gonna make you happy because they exist they're, they're gonna be out there. there there's going to be stuff that appeals to you you just gotta find it. You just gotta have an open mind about it, just like you had when you were in high school. And um, you know that's really, I think, a lot of something that a lot of people miss. Something that a lot of people don't don't get. Um, you know. So also, I think my viewer count is desynchronized again. This thing always desynchronizes. Sedge says, "Open mind. Yes, you do have to keep an open mind. It's very important. Try soju. Yeah, I'm not gonna try soju." I'm, I don't drink. I do not drink. That's one thing I won't do. But uh, there are a lot of things, you know, that I just, you think about, you got to do. And um, like I said, with the, with, the, with the new music and all that, it's really important. There have been, there have been people in the past, there have been mainly girls. Girls try to get me to drink. They're like, "Hey, let's just let's just drink a little bit of beer or whatever." And I'm just like, "No, I don't drink. You're not gonna make me drink." <laughs> they think they can change me. They're wrong. In the end, I think they appreciate it more than anything because a lot of guys with an alcohol problem, especially in Korea, and you know, in the end, once I say like, "No, definitely, I don't drink at all," then usually they're just like, "Well." Yeah, that's pretty healthy, honestly. It's it's a pretty good decision. Usually they want to know why, right? If you say, I like to drink beer, nobody asks why. You say, I like to drink soju, nobody says, well, why? Why do you like to drink soju? But you say, I don't drink anything. I don't drink alcohol at all. Everybody, why? Why? Is it your religion? And truth is just that it's a personal choice. 
just I just don't want to I don't want my mind to be cloudy I don't want to um, mess up my mind same reason I don't drink caffeine and um, I will drink tea but it's got to be herbal tea so no caffeine and uh, you know in the end I think they usually appreciate it but so many of them try to change me like uh, this you know they try to change me but I'm not gonna drink I just don't I just don't I don't want to Sejin tries to get me to drink <laughs> Sejin like soju <laughs> one time no not even once but I'm curious, if you're in the chat, why don't you tell me what your favorite thing to drink is? If you drink alcohol, what's your favorite alcoholic drink? If you don't drink alcohol, what's your favorite non-alcoholic drink? So in the same way, no alcohol, no caffeine, only chamomile tea. Yes. Yes. Love chamomile tea. I also, I mean, I like a couple of other kinds of herbal teas, but chamomile is definitely my favorite. Chamomile helps you sleep at night. Right? Um, that's a good one. Um, what else is a good one? I like I like peppermint tea. That's pretty good. I like um, uh, there's a, another kind, measured ta as measured uh, tea, which is like um, like plum tea. That's pretty good. Peach tea, but all of those are herbal, so of course no caffeine. So you know, there you go. You gotta you just gotta do that, and those are really good teas. And, um, you know, I don't know. I, I enjoy it. There's a place, there's a restaurant. They just don't ever drink Dunkin', Dunkin' Cam. Dunkin', you Dunkin' Donuts Chamomile? Okay. It's tainted. Tainted, that sounds bad. Perhaps I, perhaps I won't do that. I don't like, sometimes I drink chamomile tea from the store. Sometimes I'll, like, drink it if, like, if, if I'm going to a coffee shop and I'm just like, eh, I had too much sugar recently, so I just want something that doesn't have any sugar, then I'll order chamomile tea from like Starbucks or something like that, but not Dunkin' Donuts. The only thing, literally the only thing I get from Dunkin' Donuts is donuts, because that's about, that's about the only thing they're good for in my mind. And they have some good donuts recently, and I don't know if they had this in America too, but in, in Korea they've got these uh, peanut butter and cream cheese donuts, they're freaking amazing. And, um, like, it sounds weird, right? But, but they're so good. I just get those peanut butter cream cheese donuts that I'm just like, I just take a bite. I'm just like, oh, this is so good. Can't resist. Okay, what do I get here? Boom. Veteran Saurian Cash. Awesome. Jealousy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very good. Very good donuts. And they also have a they also have a new one I haven't tried yet. It's a new flavor. It's uh, it's called Who Stole My Peanut Butter? No, no, no. Who hid my peanut butter? Is the name of it? It's in Korean. Nuga, nuga, ne peanut butter sumgesuka is the name in in Korean. And it's Who Hid My Peanut Butter? I think the English translation that they that they list is just like peanut butter filled or something like that. Sounds sounds dirty. Well, I didn't realize we wanted to go there, but <laughs> it's in the shape of a dog bone. I don't really... Wait a second. Now it sounds more dirty. Hold on a second. <laughs> that sounds more dirty. Okay, don't hide that peanut butter in those wrong places, all right? Just don't, just don't do it. Even if you have a dog, it's tempting. Don't do it. Because eventually that dog is going to bite. You're not going to be very happy with that. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's that was pretty good. Recently, I got uh, a donut there that was called, um, Sarangibajin something. That means love struck donut. It's like a heart shape, and it's got, like, um, in, in, one, in one side of it, it's got custard, and the other side, it has jam, like jelly filled, and it's that's pretty good as well. And it's got the, uh, the whole pink frosting on the, on the top of the strawberry bits. Very good. They got like really interesting looking donuts in Korea. Like they're not they're not very simple. They don't like simple donuts. 
Same thing with pizza. Like, they don't like simple pizza. They, you can't just get, like, a regular pepperoni pizza in Korea or whatever. It's like, it's always got to have, like, other stuff. Like, they put corn in the pizza, right? Which is good. Don't get me wrong. You probably are. Me? I don't know if you're talking about me. To those of you that don't speak Korean, I think she just said this dummy. I think she's calling me a dummy. I don't know why, though. Kimchi pizza. Now, that sounds good, honestly. I like kimchi. Kimchi is uh, definitely one of my favorite Korean foods. When it's made right, some, sometimes you get this kimchi and it's a little too spicy. Sometimes it's a little, it's a little too sour, right? Because kimchi is like fermented cabbage. Sometimes they let it ferment just for a little too long. And uh, that's not great. But, but uh, you know, every now and then it's pretty good. Not every now and then, actually. More than every now and then. It's pretty good most of the time. I actually had some last night. I went to this restaurant, I had mirchi guksu last night, and um, that's basically anchovy anchovy soup, I guess, and super good, and they served it, of course, with kimchi, and the kimchi was pretty good, not too sour, not too spicy. Best first two weeks, made it, I make it from scratch, well, awesome, I mean, that's pretty good, usually, I mean, I think a lot of these restaurants here just get it out of a, a package. I don't think they make it from scratch, but yeah, that sounds really good. I have eaten homemade kimchi, and and it's it's really good if somebody knows how to make it. Basically, of course, if somebody doesn't know how to make it, but somebody doesn't know how to make anything, it's not going to be good. But you know, kimchi is definitely is definitely really good when it's homemade. So, you know, I definitely I like I like. Uh, another thing I had recently that's Korean food is um, takugi guksu, which is like, it literally translates to like chicken noodle soup, but it's more than that. It's got like thick noodles, right? Fat noodles, and it's got like bits of chicken in it. It's, it's, it's really good. Making me hungry, actually. I had that in Seoul because I went to Seoul. I'm also going to die pretty soon. Boom. Uh, where's this guy? Where'd he go? Stances, right? Earthshaker, here we go. Where is this guy? He's a ranger. I thought I was fighting a scourge. Boom. Oh yeah, boom. Here we go. Wastrel's ruin. I did it. Sweet. Killed him. Well, as long as I can... As long as I can actually kill him. Here, boom. Alright, he's dead. Now all my skills are on cooldown. I still have to kill a scourge. Where is he? Uh-oh. That's a firebrand. Okay, but the Scourge seems to have left, so I'm okay there. And Firebrands are like masters of boons and everything. They've just got the boons on lock. Boom. Let's do Balanced Stance right here. Breaching Strike, right? Staggering Blow. Oh, jeez. Oh, yes, I got him! Yes, I got him! Okay, buddy. Okay, um... Soon Tubujige. Um, I have never heard that, but I don't like tubu. Tubu is tofu in Korean. If you add a little sesame oil, it becomes really tasty, but then it interrupts the fermenting process and spoils during a natural time frame. Oh, okay. I will have to keep that in mind. I might have to add that next time I have kimchi. At home, that is. Usually I have it in restaurants, but occasionally I have some at home. That sounds really good. I like, um, I like sesame. I have, um, basically... Every every day that I go to work, I get these snacks that are just sesame sticks, and they're pretty good. I like the, I just like the sesame flavor. And so adding that to kimchi, interesting, interesting idea. I want to keep that in mind. Also, is that the scourge? That's a rain. That's a pet. Okay, okay. So before I thought I was facing a necromancer. Before I was actually facing a ranger with a pet. I thought it was a minion. It looked like a minion. It definitely looked like a minion. As soon as I capture it, I'm gonna go over there. Oh, I have to. I have to use the bathroom though. All right, hold on. I'm just. I'm just gonna like stand. I'm gonna stand right here. Oh, well, apparently I cannot. Okay, I'm gonna stand here. I will be right back. I just need to use the bathroom, so I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn on this. Boom. Be right back. And I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back, and we've got this BRB thing that we have to turn off. All right, we're back. Jeez, I held that. Bit. I held that for way too long. Okay, but there are uh, there are some invaders coming over here, so I can actually go over and kill them. Okay, so where was I here? Um, somebody, somebody capturing this. Who is this? What profession? What do they do? For their job. No cookie today. Yeah, I don't have. I don't have any cookies today. I had. Um, look at this. They just ran away from me. <laughs> They're like, oh, a spellbreaker. Screw that. That that's pretty funny. Screw that spellbreaker. It's been great. You're a cool guy to converse with. Very engaging, knowledgeable, friendly, and charismatic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I try. I, uh, I stream every weekday in Korea. Um, look at this. That spellbreaker just ran across. He didn't even fight me. Just just, <laughs> just ran and just left. Um, yeah, I definitely appreciate that. If you wanna if you wanna join me in my future streams, I I would uh, I'd love that. See, no cookie day. Not yesterday. I don't know what's up. Oh yeah, not yeah, not yesterday because I was in. Um, Soul yesterday because I had to I had to go there to do something, and um, found out I'm gonna get quite a hefty tax refund, which is pretty cool. Uh, I had to go to the tax tax offices in Jungle, so I had to get that, and uh, <clears throat> and I didn't get home yesterday until like 8 p.m. or something like that. I had a, a lot of crap to do, orthopedics and all that. But um, so that's why I couldn't. I did schedule a video to come out yesterday. They get very many views. I think most of the people that watch my channel are here for Guild Wars 2. So that's why I think they didn't really get very, very many views. But uh, but yeah, I did have a video. I tried to do that. And listen, on February 20th, they're going to take away my ability to schedule the uh, videos until I reach 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. Um, which is going to be a little while. So they're, they're going to take away my ability to schedule. Seoul is where my mom is from. Okay, do you know where in Seoul? Because Seoul is a big city. I know a few areas. Um, yeah. Um, but, you know, even if I can't schedule videos, I'm going to do my best to have things like when I know I'm not going to be here, I'll just, like, record the video ahead of time. And then... Um, and then I will just basically have it ready to upload and then just upload it as soon as I get home. That's the best I could do, um, you know, until I get my ability back to schedule videos. That's going to be uh, much better. Okay, so... So we have these. We have the... Uh, we have Heroes Lodge we have Blue Veil Refuge, which is good. So we could just continue on with these, uh, with these ruins here. I'm curious, um, Darkest Timeline, do you speak Korean? Do you speak the language? Because uh, if your mom's from Seoul, then then it's reasonable probably to assume that, that uh, she speaks Korean, but did you get taught it? I'm very interested in that. I speak some Korean. Not as much as I would prefer, uh, but I'm studying. I've been here for two years, so I better speak some Korean, right? <laughs> I study. I got some books. I study, I, I make Korean friends and everything, I converse with them. If I could do YouTube full time, then I would I would then be able to, instead of working, I could just go and like get a Korean tutor and just study Korean privately. That would be cool. Um, so do I, yes. Lunar New Year, almost. That is why I don't have to work on, on Thursday. Um, very excited about not working on Thursday. <laughs> Been over this earlier in the stream, but I actually don't have to work for like a full week after today. Today's got a, you know, Tuesday and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I don't have to work, but uh, super happy about that. Probably gonna do some some just uh, relaxing stuff. Probably gonna eat some dukguk because that's the traditional Korean uh, Lunar New Year food. That's gonna be a fun time. Um, gonna do, gonna be able to stream for a little bit longer on the weekdays because don't have to, don't have to work on Thursdays, so I can stream 
instead of two hours, perhaps I could do three hours. Depends on how many people actually join in. If people are joining in, people are enjoying it, then uh, then of course I'll go for longer. Um, we'll see. Might be able to test out a few other games as well in the streams. Depends on what people want. Uh, but that's all that's coming later this week. Super exciting stuff. I'm excited. I'm s I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I love that. There's this, this commercial where this guy, um, he's just like very calm. He's like, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Can't remember when that, let me see. From the south part of the part of Seoul in the country. Okay. Um, south part of Seoul... I mean, Gangnam is in the south, but that's not that's not countryside. Uh, let me see. You did not go along on Friday. I came home at 12, 20, 12, 30. You're off. Yeah. I didn't go, I didn't go very long on Friday. Um, not really many people joined in. I wasn't really feeling it. So, <laughs> so I cut it short. So, um, yeah, there was that. I was kind of bummed out, Sejin, because you didn't join. I knew because you had to work and everything. I understand everything, but I was kind of bummed out, so... Um, I don't know. I live south of Seoul. I don't actually live in Seoul. Um, I live in a city called Pyeongtaek. Um, so there's that. Um, I used to live in a city called Butan, which is technically not in Seoul. It's close to Seoul, but. Yeah, work comes first before the stream. I know. I understand. That's I got to do the same thing, right? Because, you know, eventually I got to leave for work as well. That's why I only can stream for uh, two hours on weekdays. Or it's not on weekdays. Um, on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's it. So, you know, work, work's got to come first. But what would be so awesome is if I could make YouTube... My job, you know, doesn't have to pay super, super well, but basically if it just paid enough to, to support me, then, you know, then I could, then I could, um, you know, focus on this more than work would be the stream. That would be, that would be work. That was, that sounds like a dream, man. And, and I've made some money. I made some money in the past from YouTube and, um, and that was absolutely the dream. I would just get up, right, and I'm just making videos and enjoying it, right? It's it's work, right? You actually got to put. It's not just like playing video games. You you do have to put work into it. Back then, I was putting a lot of effort into editing and stuff because I didn't have a job. And um, and you know, it's definitely work. You you do have to uh, put put lots of effort into it and everything, and you gotta you gotta treat it like a job. But it's fun. It's something that you can enjoy, and uh, that's that's what makes it so appealing to me, really. You know, this guy is absolutely pitiful. Look how look how horrible this guy's playing. He's got this AOE thing or whatever. His pet. He's not even making his pet revive him. Look at this. He probably is. If I had to guess, he's either below level eighty, right? You. Oh, oh, oh no, oh no! <laughs> get away! Get away! Go! <laughs> Whoa, that was insane. Holy crap. I don't know if they might be in green. They're going to glide off of there. Yeah, they are in green. They're going to glide off of there, and I'm going to be dead. Boom. They might be going for the tower. I hope they're going for the tower, because if they are, then I don't need to worry about it. Then they're just going to... Uh, then they're just going to, like, not even worry about me, but... Definitely work. I just made a zombie apocalypse video, and editing alone took days. Uh, yeah, something, that editing, man, that editing takes a lot of work. I, um, I don't do a whole lot of editing these days, and it's mainly because, um, I, I want to grow my audience a little bit first. I feel like if, recently I uploaded a video, got about 100 views or whatever. I, I do have a few videos that have like a, like 2,000 views in recent history, but, um, you know, basically, if, if not very many people are going to watch them, then I figure I don't need to put too, too much effort into to editing. Okay, here we go. Stances. I'm dead. Oh, no, I'm dead. I thought I maybe had a chance at just this firebrand alone, but if I'm facing everybody else... Yeah, nope. Not going to happen. <laughs> But if you make, if you have a channel, if you got like a gaming channel, then uh, perhaps we could do a collaboration. That could be fun. 
Um, let me see. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta see this. Um, go to channel. I'm stalking. I'm stalking. I'm sorry. I can't help it. If I find out somebody has a channel, I'm just like, ooh, I'm like, I'm curious what kind of videos do they make? I, I love doing collaborations, honestly. I did a collaboration with uh, Hottie the Edge Master recently, and uh, he's famous in Guild Wars 2, and uh, that was, that's fun. Let me see, okay, okay, Zombie Apocalypse, I saw this, okay, Extended Cranberries version, okay. Okay, so you, do you make like uh, movie trailers or something? Because this looks pretty cool. This looks quite fun. I think I'm gonna have to subscribe. Strangers 2, movie trail. Do new video if people watch soul videos more. Not gaming, I make music video movie trailers. Okay, well that is awesome. I'm actually going to subscribe, sir. And... I'm trying to like bring the chat window down so I can subscribe. Alright, excellent. You, have, you now have an extra subscriber. Going to watch your videos. They look quite, quite cool. And Sejin, also, Sejin, you should make videos as well. Uh, I would definitely watch your videos. Um, yeah, no problem, of course. If I, if I like uh, somebody's videos, I want to subscribe, right? I want something to watch. And it helps because for a long time, I, I think for a long time, I was somebody that, that paid a lot of attention to just trying to make videos on YouTube, but I wasn't, I didn't really watch videos on YouTube a while, a long time ago. And um, I also just finished bronze, or I finished wood, wood division. And uh, so because of that, it's like, I, I feel like I wasn't really experiencing other YouTubers as much. And, and I want to. I want to experience other YouTubers. I want to see what they have to offer and watch cool videos. And, um, and now that I'm also an active viewer of YouTube, I, I feel like I'm learning a lot about the types of things that people put out. I'm learning a lot about the culture, especially of smaller YouTubers, because um, I'm subscribed to the big YouTubers, right? I, got, I like Dashy Games. I don't know if you guys know Dashy Games. He's pretty famous. He's got like 4 million subscribers, and it's fun to watch his videos. But I also like to watch the small YouTuber stuff because there's a lot of stuff that gets passed over so much by, by other people, and, and I don't think it needs to be. Big City Jeju, if people watch Soul. Okay, love watching videos. Content creators all have such unique styles, and yes, learn a lot from the passion and skills from others. Yes, absolutely. But if nobody looked, then no. Well, Sejin, I promise you, if you make those videos, then at least you will have one viewer. At least I will watch. Boom. Killing this, uh, this NPC right here. Oh, crap. Boom. Endure pain. Here we go. Got this. Two. There you go. Look at that. Darkest timeline would watch two. You gotta make those videos. <laughs> I have soul videos, but not much, not many people watch. Um, well, perhaps we could do a collaboration. I mean, there you go. I mean, I don't get like a ton, I don't get like a ton of views, views but, but I do get some. And the, the few people that would watch my videos will also see your channel. So, collaboration. <laughs> I like collaborations, honestly. I think collaborations are an amazing idea. Problem is, in Guild Wars 2, there are not a whole lot of people for like a smaller YouTuber like me to collaborate with. Um, usually it's like a lot of the people that are famous in Guild Wars 2 or a lot of people that make Guild Wars 2 videos, usually they have uh, a much higher amount of subscribers. Like, um, like for example, there's there's one that's like a like a smaller Guild Wars 2 YouTuber named Mighty Teapot, and he makes awesome videos. He does like this show called Tea Time. He's smaller on YouTube because he mainly does Twitch, and um, and uh, he's got 11,000 subscribers. Right, I have 588. So 
you know, it's going to be, I, I would love to be on tea time though. Cause I love those. I, I love, oh man. I love those discussions. He's got really, really interesting discussions about like the state of Guild Wars 2 and like what's coming up in balance and, and things that they think that they should add to the game and stuff. I would love to be on that show, but the problem is I just don't have enough subscribers. I think probably if I hit a thousand, I would probably ask him to be on the show. I would ask, hey, you know, I, I really love Tea Time. I've been watching for, you know, a long, long time now. And, uh, and I'd love to be on there if, if you would have me. You know, and it's, it'd be super fun. I love that show. And of course, there's a really famous ones like Wooden Potatoes. Wooden Potatoes has like 120,000 subscribers. <laughs> He's huge compared to me. I mean, I, some people look at me and they think I have a lot of subscribers. But I guess it's all about perspective, really. Because, like, to me, if I see somebody that has a thousand subscribers, that's like a ton, right? But if, but if, if, somebody that has like 100 subscribers or 50 or 20 or something like that they look at me and I've got almost 600 then you know to them I'm the giant but to me I'm the ant and uh, so it's, it's kind of interesting about the uh, the whole the whole dynamic of the, the perspective of how many subscribers you got but the thing is I don't know I feel like my number of subscribers is a little overinflated because because I have like uh, I have 588 subscribers, but they they usually I think they came to my channel back a long time ago when I used to make Minecraft videos, and I don't make Minecraft videos anymore, so they don't usually watch my newer stuff. Also, here's an ally. This is a spellbreaker. Awesome. What is his name? Kaba. Boom. Yeah, that's that. That's not gonna happen. He's just. Look at this. Even the NPC's running away. As soon as I just... Ugh. Now he's gonna heal. Boom. Healed. I, I couldn't. I'm just uh, auto-attacking. <laughs> Look at this. Okay, now he wants a piece again. Boom. Interrupt. Is everyone always in the mentality of having more aspiring to greatness has no roof? You're absolutely right about that. I'm sure Dashy, Dashy Games has over 4 million subscribers. I'm sure he looks at PewDiePie and he's just, man, like, if I could just have that many more. <laughs> J JFLA does 5 million sub videos, then two months later he does 6 months. <laughs> 6 million sub videos. Oh my goodness. If I could do that, man, that's... But the thing is, I don't need all those. I don't need millions, okay? I figure if I can do enough where, where I can do YouTube full-time, where I can just devote all of my work time. There's like a hair in my mouth. <laughs> if I could do crap, just a hair in my mouth. That was an eyelash. One of my eyelashes just fell down into my mouth. If I could do, if I could get to an amount where I'm just like, I could do YouTube full time, a reasonable amount of people watch my videos and people enjoy them, right? I don't want to make controversial videos. I don't want to make clickbait videos or anything. I want to make people want like I want to make people see the video and and know what they're getting into when they click on the video and get exactly what they want from that video get exactly what they're expecting and walk away from the video feeling entertained I want I want them to to watch and be entertained and enjoy the video and if I get enough people doing that where I can support myself I don't have a lavish a lavish lifestyle I got you know, I think the rent of my house is, you know, 500, 500 bucks or something like that. Rather have a hundred good quality subscribers than that watch and engage than a thousand meaningless subs. That's absolutely right. And that's why I don't care about the whole sub for sub thing. Um, some people do this, the sub for sub thing where they're just like, hey, subscribe to me and I'll subscribe to you. But the thing is, it's just a number at that point. Those people don't actually watch your videos. You want, you want the people that subscribe to you to, to be there because they want to be there, not just because you made a deal and they're just there just because they said they would be. You know, that's not the kind of channel that I want to have. I want the people that are at my channel that, uh, I want, I want the people that are at my channel to want to be there. And, um, you know, there, I've gotten a few comments on my videos. You know, I've been growing recently. I, I think in the last month I've gotten like an extra 40 subscribers, something like that. And 
and I will occasionally get a, a comment on a video that said, hey man, I just subscribed, I hope you return the favor. And when I get something like that, I'll check out their channel, but if I'm not interested in their videos, then I'm just not gonna do it, right? I'm just not gonna subscribe. And then most, most often, what they will do is then a few days later, they realize that I'm not playing ball and they unsubscribe. Well, in that case, I don't want them to be there, right? I don't want them to just be here just because they think I'm gonna give them something. The, the thing that I'm giving my viewers is something to watch. I'm letting them watch Guild Wars 2, right? I'm, I'm um, giving them the Caves of Cud that I recently started. I'm giving them stuff to watch that educates them about Guild Wars 2, right? Not only entertains, but I've got the Guild Wars 2 vi uh, build videos to help people make warrior builds that are fun to play. And that's what I'm giving them. I'm not giving you a subscription, right? Definitely earned my sub by just being you. Thank you so much. Game is not even a factor. Well, that's that's awesome to hear, honestly. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I think I've been... I think I've been, like, a YouTube partner f for, like, six... A little over six years now. Like, I think a week ago and six years ago, I had my first monetized video. And I, I've been making videos since, like, November of 2011 or maybe before then but that that was just making videos on an, an old camera that I would just like upload to a uh, to the computer and I would like record myself playing PSP that was hard that was really hard but um, but I've been making a video so I, I like there's certain things that I practice like just being able to talk all the time because like during the videos people tend to to want to um, stick around and watch if you just always have something to talk about, right? And I love to talk anyway, so it helps. <laughs> um, but it's taken some practice, but I definitely think it it, it helps overall. It, it kind of helps with my stress level as well, because if you just... I If you just don't die, hopefully, um, yeah, definitely get out of here. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, it definitely helps if you've got, like, now learn to drink more. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. You. Definitely not going to do that. Um, but like when, I, um, when I'm like stressed out or whatever and, and I just want to live stream because I schedule it, right? So I schedule it so people know when I'm, when I'm streaming so that people can... If people want to join in, then they know when to join in. Um, then, you know, I, I get on there and I start talking and it kind of works away the stress. Dying will definitely interrupt the relaxing gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically the thing. And basically the point of, uh, of World v. World and Chill is, because that's what the series is called, the point of World v. World and Chill is actually not for, for only Guild Wars 2 gameplay. It is gameplay, right? You get to just kind of watch some gameplay as you, as you listen or as you watch. But it's also just about relaxing. It's just kind of about, uh, you know, having a fireside chat or whatever, like FDR. <laughs> it's, just, it's just talking to people in the chat. Um, sometimes I don't really get anybody that joins the chat, but that's fine. It just allows me to just kind of talk and get stuff off my chest. And and um, there's a lot of lag. I feel like that Zerg is coming my way. I'm scared. I'm legit scared of this. Is there a Zerg? There's a Zerg v Zerg. That's what it is. What time is it over there? It's currently 11.46 a.m. Uh, probably in about 15 minutes going to end the stream. You can actually see the time. It's really hard to see. Maybe I don't know if the quality is high enough, but in the stream, uh, down in this corner of the screen, you can see uh, the time where it is or over here. Also, Sejin will tell you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just, uh, I, I wanted to have, like, an avenue on my channel where we could just, like, I could get together with my viewers and just chat, right, about anything. It doesn't really matter what the topic is. Um, occasionally I bring my friend on here. Um, Sejin calls him my, my crazy friend. Um, he is kind of crazy. And, uh, we just play World v. World. Just, just chill out together. And, um, and that's fun. It's really, honestly, a fun thing to do. And play same time every day. You're not working. Um, yes, I do play same time. 
I schedule them as well. So if you if you go to my channel when I've scheduled it, usually I schedule yeah, 10 to 12 is when I was when I stream. I will sometimes go longer if I'm not working. But if I'm working then I just go to 12. Um if you go to my channel when I've got one scheduled, then it will tell you, "Hey, upcoming live streams." And and then it will say, "Oh, like he's going to be live in this, you know." At yes, at first Yes, at, <laughs> she knows all of this. She's been around for a while. Um Yeah, I used to stream from 9 to 11, but usually when I would do that, uh nobody would come between 9 and 10, but then everybody would show up at like 10 to 11. And usually I would end up with people that were still there and still wanting to watch at 11. So instead I just decided to stream 10 to 12. And that works for me. Like, um, as long as the time works for me, then I'm alright doing it. Boom. Staggering blow. Oh crap. Stances. Here we go. Resistance. Earthshaker. 10, 8 to 10, my time. Yes. Yes, that is true. If you're in New York, then, then it's 8 to 10 p.m. I feel that works out pretty well, because my, my highest demographic is Americans, so I need to make sure that my schedule works out okay for Americans. Also, I'm going to die, because this guy's invulnerable right now. Unless I can maybe do Vengeance, please. Boom. Natural healing. Let's go. Let's do this. I missed. Oh, crap. Oh, he's not letting me hit. Okay, here we go. Full counter. Boom. Oh, can I kill this guy? I, I, I died. <laughs> I died. Dang it, man. Yep, and I do this every weekday in Korea, unless I otherwise specify. So, um, like, if you just want to know what time I'm streaming, you can just go to my, my channel. Try to be back tomorrow. All right. Definitely, I would appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um... Except in an Eastern time zone, I am not... Um, Eastern time zone, I don't stream on Friday because that's Saturday for me. So usually I'll have just a different video come out on Saturday. Sometimes I stream on Saturday. Uh, but a lot of Saturdays I'm not available. I have to do other stuff. Uh, so, I, so I just instead just do other stuff. I might stream this Saturday, which will be Friday for Eastern time. We will we'll definitely have to see. Um, you know, I, um, I don't know if I have stuff to do. Oh, no, no, I think I do. Crap, because it's, it's the weekend, and it's, it's, uh, Lunar New Year. So, that might, I might not be free on Saturday, but if, if I am, if I'm going to stream, then it will actually be scheduled on my channel. So, that's, that's how you, that's how you know. As, as a small YouTuber, it's, um, something that I have to do, I just have to like kind of be reliable. So, um, if I'm going to stream, then I want to be able to schedule it. I want to, like, I have to schedule it basically, to to let people know, hey, I'm going to be live at this time. Um, you know, join in if you if you can, if you want to. Whereas bigger YouTubers can can just say, hey, I'm not going to be streaming tomorrow or whatever, and people just know. Click the bell so YouTube will notify me. That is so, so awesome. Thank you. That helps out so much. Because sometimes people subscribe, right? But but YouTube doesn't always do a good job of notifying them when I upload videos or when I'm live and stuff like that. So it's, um, it's, it's helpful when people click the notification bell. Because that means they definitely get notified. Boom, crap. These guys are doing so much damage today. <laughs> they haven't upgraded the supply camp or anything. They're just doing so much damage. Holy crap. Okay, probably what we'll do is we've got another tick here, which is going to be in about two and a half minutes. And then... Oh, crap. Boom, natural healing. We got this. And, uh, yeah, but two and a half minutes is the next tick, and then we'll do another tick, which is another four and a half, or sorry, another five minutes, and then we'll open the loot boxes that we got. Okay. Dude, I always feel so bad about killing these Doliaks with my hammer. It just feels, like, so cruel. Like, they're just trying to deliver supplies, and I'm just, like, bah, with this huge hammer, and they're just, like, getting knocked down and stuff. Boom, nothing. Yeah, not this time. This is boom cruelty. 
Yeah, boom, nothing is another meme on my channel where like uh, these miswarp packets are something that that uh, people usually enjoy seeing because they give me some rare materials. And uh, one time I just had a ton of them to open and um, I'm just trying to deliver supplies, yeah. And uh, one time I had a ton of these Miss War packets to, to open, and I opened them all, and I just go, and boom, and nothing. And there was just nothing that I got <laughs> that was useful. Sometimes that happens. But, uh, and we only have one, so that's probably going to happen today. But sometimes, well, unless, no, actually, well, no. I probably will not get this first silver chest. No, 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 this is not silver, is it? It's bronze. Yep, I'm on bronze. I got a dry throat. Mm. Oh, that's good. It's good water. You slack. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I wish that I could say no, but honestly, I had so much stuff to do over the weekend, I didn't get to, to, to uh, do World Be World and Chill. I, I stayed in the hotel in Seoul, and of course, there's no PC in the hotel. So, I... Um, I wasn't able to play World v. World during that time and get, get up there. So I'm going to have to be grinding. I'm going to grind as hard as I can. i got to be up. To, uh, let me see. It reset on Saturday. So I should be up to, let me see. There's wood, bronze, silver, and today would be gold. So i got to be like, i get to get up, go up there. Room service? I actually did not order room service. I actually went out. Um, I was in, where was I? I was kind of close to, I was like at Dongno... Olga, that's where the hotel was, pretty cool hotel, um, <laughs> I didn't get room service, it was an expensive hotel, okay, super expensive, I went out, and instead I went to Guangamun, Guangamun, there's a restaurant called Sepo, which means New Spring, and they have Dukku, which is rice cake soup, and they also have, um, Kaguksu, which is this noodle soup, and they also have takogi soup, which instead of mussels, and um, they have chicken. It's a chicken. I was talking about this earlier on the screen. Um, but Sejin, I know you know what this is. Because <laughs> you know what takogi is. Um, but that was good. It was really good. So that's what I had for dinner. Um, afterward, I got some snacks at a convenience store and went back up to the room. Room service, European. European, American, Asian, and order from all three. Yeah, no. That's dude, this this hotel is like two hundred dollars a night. I'm not gonna do that. I had to do that because I had to go to the American Embassy. Um, American Embassy is in Guangamun, and so I stayed near the embassy and had to be there by like nine a.m. And do not have I do not want to have to wake up super early to get there, right? Because it's it's a long way from here to Seoul by subway. It's like an hour and a half. And, you, of course, you don't want to, like, get right to the station at 9. You want to be, like, you want to be at the station at, like, 8.15 or 8.20 or something like that. So, you got to just, you, that means you have to make sure you leave at, what, like, 6.50 or something like that. Which means you got to get up way earlier than that. So, if you're going, if, if I was to leave from here the day that I had to be at the embassy, oh, that would not be fun. That would not be fun at all. Also, I can't kill that guy. I don't know why. Occasionally, I get in situations where I can't kill that bull yak. Boom, staggering blow. And backbreaker. Boom. Yeah, so, but I went to the U.S. Embassy. Let me see. Make a mean rice cake soup. I let the rich... Uh, the, oh, I think you mean the rice cakes. The rice cakes soak in chicken stock instead of water. Okay. That, that sounds good, actually. I will have to ask one of my Korean friends to make that that way. Uh, I'll have to... D also, uh, yeah, no. I'm just... Can I just lie down and die? Look, stances. Look, the stances, man. The stances allow you to survive anything. <laughs> She's got so much stuff. And then as soon as the stances go away. And no, I didn't have any friends in Seoul that I could, that I could stay in their house. Um... I wish. I used to have a friend that lived in Noksapyeong, which is right near Itaewon, and and he's from London. That's where he he's from. That's his hometown. 
Uh, but he moved to Taiwan, so... I used to play video games with him every week, sometimes twice a week, Sundays and Thursdays. Um, because I never worked... Wait, no, no, no. Hold on. I never worked on Thursdays, so I was able to make it to his, his house on Thursday nights. And then... Because I, I used to work... When I lived in Bhutan, it was much easier to get to him, so it was only like an hour or less. Taiwan foreigner. No, he's he was from England, but he moved. Now he's now he's living in Taiwan. Um. Yes, I did talk about him before. <laughs> he's a good friend. I actually talked to him um, a couple of days ago, I think. And um, yeah, he lived he lived there, and and I didn't when I lived in Bhutan. I worked uh, four days a week, just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Oh, yeah, he's a foreigner in Taiwan now. Yeah, now I see what you mean. <laughs> um, and that was a pretty fun schedule, honestly. It was a nice break, right? It was just Thursday, didn't have to go to work, and then Friday, I would work, but then I get the weekend, right? So that was pretty good. And I also, I never had to go to work early because I worked at a Hagwon, so it was pretty good. I have had a um, bad Hagwon job where I had to work nine hours a day, and... I had to work, wake up early because it took me a while to get there as well. That, not fun. Not fun. I'll tell you what. You should never, ever settle for a job that you hate. And I didn't. Eventually got out of that job. At the time, I couldn't quit the job. But eventually, once I found a better job, right? Then, at that time, I just I left. And plus... There was a coworker at that workplace that was like spreading a bunch of rumors at me, saying that I was like abandoning my students or whatever. I was just like, what the fuck? Now I work with rich kids. Um. Well, I mean, sort of, I guess. I don't know how. I don't know how expensive Chungdam is. I don't know how expensive that is as a school. Also, I did get the tick. Okay, so we got the tick. So let's see what we've got in the loot boxes. Suit we got. We didn't quite make it up to the first bronze chest. We did complete wood, but we didn't complete bronze. Anything in bronze. So first of all, let's salvage the stuff we've got. Copper fed salvage matic Boom, this boom, boom, boom. This is the only proper course, apparently. Okay, we've got not not too many loot boxes. We didn't uh, we didn't get as many as we usually do because we weren't outnumbered for some of the time. Uh, but we had a good time. We had we had some good. Some good stuff. All right, so let's go for the Quetzal Caches first. Boom. Okay, got some some materials I can deposit here. And two Thorn Caches as well. So, boom, two of these. Get some more materials, right? I need these materials. We also got a rare. Let's see if we can get an Ecto. No Ecto. Dang. Okay, but we did get these materials. I need these materials because I'm trying to get the Legendary Armor, right? It's a heavy Thorn bag. We got some more Venom there. Okay. And crafting material coffer, let's see. We got uh, the fangs, we got scales or a calcum. Scales and fangs are particularly useful for the legendary armor. All right, chop caches, we got some more uh, things like that. Is that, that's an exotic, look at this. And that's a sigil of perception. That could be cool. Hold on, if I just sell this, I, I think probably it's not gonna sell for that much, but I'm, I'm going to salvage it because I want the uh, globs of dark matter and all that stuff, but that's over a gold, it's 1.7 gold. Legendary armor sounds prestigious. Yes, it's tough to get um, And it takes a long time to get but uh, that's why um, That's why we're just going at it a little bit every day, you know exotic pixels Sigil of perception. I thought that would be a useful sigil. It's not though, but we did get uh, two globs of ectoplasm So that's good. I could show you I actually already have one piece of, of legendary armor Okay, so we got this uh, fallen adventurers backpack now, this is, a lot of people don't know this, actually. This is one of the very, very few containers that you could actually preview and see what the possibility is of, like, what's inside it. So you can click preview. You can actually see all this stuff, right? You can see the different stats. You get rampagers, berserkers, right? These are the bonus common. These are the common and uncommon, right? Common spirit shard, whatever. But also, you can go down here to bonus rare... And you can see all these things that, like Doom Seal, you can see this great sword that's a unique skin that you have a possibility of getting. 
right? You could just buy it on the trading post, but who wants to do that? Magma Ton, this is a hammer. A lot of people don't even know this, but you could just preview this, this container in particular. The Ebon Blade, that's a cool one as well. Boom. That's a great sword. Not a bad looking great sword. You can see all the things you will not get. Yeah, most of the time that is true. Most of the time you don't get this stuff. But something that's really cool is what I did one time is I looked through all these skins, right? And um, and I look at like Usoko's Needle. That's pretty cool. I might want to I might want to use that. I looked through all these skins and I said, okay, like for example, Soul Shard. I was like, I really like this dagger, so I'm gonna buy it on the trading post. I didn't even know this skin even existed until I saw this. Um, like. Or, or like the Charzuka. Look at this freaking Charzuka. It's so it's freaking huge. Boom. It's, it's so huge it clips into the ground when you're not even using it. This is insane. Um, you got the Spectral Wave Modulator, right? Boom, that's a rifle. You got the... What else did I get? You get this exotic focus. Warriors can't use focuses, so... Or foci. So... Um, Glimmerfang, that's another dagger. It's kind of a cool dagger skin. I don't have it, but it's it's good. Kenshi's Wing is a dagger skin I got. Um, Moonshank was so cool to me. I wish they had another corresponding dagger called Sunshank because that would be perfect because Spellbreaker has a trait called Sun and Moon Style for wielding daggers. So you could have one called Moonshank, one called Sunshank, and just wield them like that. Um... And perhaps it's like a full circle or something like that with like some light things coming out of it. That would be really cool. Um, you know, I got, I just, basically I just went through these and I, I looked at all the skins that I might want. Ultra Moonshank, Ultra Sunshank, yeah. Um, I went through that, you get all these armor skins. There's some that it doesn't show. See, 975 items not shown. So there's crap tons of stuff that you can actually get from this. Um, oh, there you go, I actually stayed for another tick. So I was able to get that, uh, that the uh, the first bronze chest. Okay, so let's go ahead and open it. And of course, like Sejin said, we're seeing stuff that we would never get because we didn't get any of that. Um, but there's that. Next, there's the chest of the mist. Let's see. Uh, it's it's going to give us testimonies of heroics, which is another resource that we need. I don't know how many it will give us, though. Let's see. Eight. Not too bad. All right. And then we've got the mist warp packets here, which hopefully will give us something good. No. Okay, it's just, and nothing. Boom, nothing. We got jute and some leather. All right, and from these skirmish chests, we can get the testimonies of heroics. Um, and that's something that we definitely need a lot of. Boom, nothing. Yes, that was your chance to, to say that that time. So there's that. Um, this game sounds intricate. Yes, it, it's quite intricate. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of stuff... Um, a lot of different kinds of rewards and a lot of stuff that that you can that you could look forward to in this game. It's really really fun, in that respect. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and salvage just a little bit of this gear, get some more stuff to deposit. There we go, and more luck. And there you go. So that that's probably gonna do it for this stream. Uh, if there's anybody that's that's joined that has joined that is not subscribed yet, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I live stream every weekday, um, so. You know, check out that. I love to do World Be World and Chill. So, um, so you know, always happy to join to, to have people join the stream. So, uh, yeah, if you like joining, then uh, then feel free to do it again. And um, that's going to be the end. So, uh, Sedja says bye bye. Have a good day. Peace out. Don't forget to stop my way. Stop by my way and say hi. All right, will do absolutely. And. Um, yeah, thanks again, everybody, for watching, and I will see you guys next time.